surprise the children. Tiny. 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 I am blessed. I am blessed. 
been going almost 17 years and I said you know she's the best mother and the best friend I ever had yes. but I know she was living right she, she lived right as long as I can remember and, uh, <clears throat> and one of these days I'm going to go I'm going to see my mom Amen. I, but first of 
all, I want to see Jesus. Amen. 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 So you all pray for me that I'll get stronger and I can come to church more than what I do. And uh, I love the Lord so much. Amen. I've been home a lot, but you know, I've never stopped praying or asking him for his help or receiving help from him. But just remember me in your prayers. Well, I want to stand up and say that I thank God for giving me another day here with my family. Mm -hmm. and, and I see lots of families that are not together and it makes me feel sad for them. Yeah. So I thank God that um, my family can be together. And, <clears throat> excuse me, I pray every day that I can be a good role model to my kids. Amen. Um, Again, I see lots of people that are not. So thank God for that too. Let's I have a uh, request. I talked to a fellow yesterday evening on the phone, got the witness. 
Christmas to him, and but it didn't get his name. But his dad had just had a stroke, and he was taken him to the hospital. And he was rushing around, getting ready to go to the hospital with him. So the Lord knows who it is. Amen. So we'll just uh, pray for him that he's better today. We have a friend that's my sister-in-law's brother. Uh, he, he went in for surgery. And he's had complications, and he he's on a bench and feeding tubes and all of that stuff. So pray for him. I'm like Bill. He's God knows who it is. And then we have a friend that had surgery, and during the process, he lost a loose use of one leg. And he's having to take therapy and trying to get back in that leg and pray for him. I'd like for y'all to meet with my sister. She's out of the hospital. She was in there for two weeks. She's got multiple conditions, and she can't be operated on at all. And because uh, she's in too bad of health. And remember Howard, he had to go to see a heart doctor, and he's got some inflammation in his right toe and he had to go for a CT the other day and just pray for them that they would minister God's word and song and mm -hmm. praise wherever they go. Remember my children, they all need the Lord. Got a Jewish worker? Almighty Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, Father, I praise you, dear Lord, that we can bow before you. Dear Lord, that we can come before your holy presence, dear Lord, by the blood of the Lamb, Father. Lord, we just praise you, dear Lord God, for who you are. Lord, we praise you, dear Lord God, that there's none like you, Father. Lord God, that you share, you don't share your glory with another. And Almighty Father, we just lift up our hearts and and, and praise to you this, this morning, Father God, Lord, for all that you've done and all that you're going to do. Father God, Lord, we just praise you for letting us gather in your name and praise you, Father God, Lord, for saving us, dear Lord, for sending your Son, dear Lord God, to take our sin upon him, Father, that, Lord God, that we would be victorious in this life, Father God, Lord, no matter what we come up against, Father God, knowing that the battle is not ours, but that's yours, Father, and, and Lord, we just thank you, dear Lord, Father God, Lord, for delivering us and always causing us to triumph in Christ, Father. And Lord, we just thank you so much, Father, for our mothers, dear Lord God. And Lord God, for the witness, dear Lord, that Christian mothers give to their children, Almighty Father. And Lord, we just uh, we ask you for every every request, Father God, for Lord, you know the desires of our heart. And we pray, Father, that, that Lord God, that you would help each and every one, Father. Lord, most of all, those that are lost, Father. Lord God, those that don't know you and haven't accepted your pardon and forgiveness of sin. Father, help us to be a witness to Lord God, uh, to a lost and a dying world. Help us to have a burden, my Father God, Lord, that we might uh, be able to lead souls to you, dear Lord God, that Lord, that you would save them and wash them in your own blood. And, and Lord God, we just thank you for that, Father God. And Lord, most of all, I pray this morning that, dear Lord, that you'd help us to worship in spirit and in truth, Father. Lord God, that we would set ourselves aside, Lord God, and look to you, the author and the finisher of our faith, Almighty Father. And Lord God, we pray, Father, for all of the churches around this morning. We pray for the lost souls to hear the word this morning. Father God, I pray that you would send it forth with power. Lord, that you would accomplish what you sent it to do, Father. And Lord, we praise you in Jesus' name. If we could sing 84 in the blue book, I know that song has lots of parts to it, but that song I used to sing to Tommy when he was little, and he was calling me for a long time, and that was the only thing that would help him go to sleep was singing that song to him. Mm -hmm. I once was lost in sin, but Jesus took me in, and then a little light from heaven filled my soul. It made my heart in love and wrote my name above, and just a little thought 
God sent His Son. They called Him Jesus. He came to love. Beautiful heaven must be. 
me. Sweet home of the happy and free, fair haven of rest for the weary. How beautiful heaven must be. I'm longing to go to fair heaven, to be with the happy and free. To sing the long ages in singing, how beautiful heaven must be, how beautiful heaven must be, sweet home of the happy and free, fair haven of rest for the weary.
So we've been talking about worship. Um, why should we, what's one reason why we should worship God? Mm -hmm. yep. Jesus came to bring salvation. Um, what kind of sacrifice was Jesus? Perfect. He was perfect. Amen. He was without sin, without spot or blemish. Um, what's one way we can worship God? What's one way we can worship? Obedience to Him. If we're obedient, that means that we trust Him. We, that's a form of, of worship. Um, and we'll talk about another way, another reason to worship God. And let's go over our memory verse. Okay. Matthew 1, 21. And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. And I was trying to say it without looking. Matthew 4, 21, And she shall bring forth the Son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. Good job. Hmm? Yes. Matthew 1, 21, And she shall bring forth the Son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. Good job. Anybody else? You want to try Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, we're going to talk about another reason why we should worship God, and we're going to do this first while playing a game. Y'all watch The Price is Right. All right? Okay. We're going to play The Price is Right. Um, I've got some items up here, and I've got prices on the front of them. And if the if you think that the price should be is really higher than that then you say higher if you think it should be lower, then say lower, okay? Now the first item up is Tide laundry detergent. Higher. You think the price should be higher than $4? Uh, lower. Lower. Okay. Higher. So oh. $8. Yes. Okay. Wow. All right, here we have a Webkin. <laughs> little, yeah, this is, his name is Old Man. And the price higher. we have is two dollars. Higher. 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 Nine ding ding ding. The price is higher. It's usually nine dollars. I thought they were about twelve dollars. Okay. Next, we have a little Hot Wheels car. It, huh? You think it should be lower than five dollars? All right. Anybody else? What do y'all think? Lower. 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 Ding, 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 oh, lower. Oh, <laughs> here we have a movie, Facing the Giants. I don't know if y'all have ever seen this or not, but it's really good. You lower, think it should be lower than $25. Yeah. Okay. Ding, ding, ding. It's $20. It's lower. Okay. Here we have a Bible. Higher. Higher. Higher, higher. higher than $10. Okay. Because you can buy... Yeah, well, about 40 bucks. That's how much this is. Ding, ding, ding. The price is higher. And here we have heaven. Now, I'm not, this isn't just the, the paper with the word heaven on it, but actually heaven, a trip to heaven. Higher. 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 You think it would be higher than $10,000? Yeah. Okay. Higher. It's lower. <laughs> zero. <laughs> the price of a trip to heaven is zero. <coughs> You can't buy your way to heaven, can you? Amen. No, Bless you the Lord. can. Okay. <coughs> now I want you to open up your Bibles. Why can't we buy our way to heaven? Bless the Lord. Why can't we buy a trip to heaven? Hmm? Anybody know why? It's already been paid for. All right. It's already been, been, been paid for. What's the, there's only one way to get to heaven. Does anybody know the way? Through Jesus. That's right. All right, turn your Bibles to Luke chapter 2. First of all, 
which orange spoke of us. to a city. What's that city? Jerusalem. Okay. Um, why did they take him to Jerusalem? Jesus is just eight days old. How? Why did they take him to Jerusalem? What were they going to do there? To present him to the to the Lord. Um, they were supposed to offer a sacrifice. What sacrifice should they have offered? Two pairs of something. Autumn red. Two pairs of turtle doves or two young pigeons. Okay, what was Simon promised that he would see before he died? He was promised that he would see something. You read it. That he should he would he wouldn't die before he saw the Lord's Christ. Yeah. Um, how did Simon know who the baby Jesus was? Holy Spirit was on him. Um, it said um, the Holy Ghost was upon him. And it was revealed unto him by the Holy Ghost that he should not see death before he has seen the Lord's Christ. So he takes the baby, he takes baby Jesus, and he's holding the baby. And he blessed God and said, Lord, thou, now lettest thou thy servant depart in peace according to thy word, for mine eyes have seen thy salvation. That if he had seen another baby in there, would he have done the same thing? Yeah. No. Because there's only one Amen. Christ. There's only one. And he was, he was, it was revealed to him by the Holy Ghost that this was the Christ. This was the Lord's Christ. There's only one Christ. And there's only one way to salvation. Amen. Um, God pointed Simon directly to Jesus and none other. God revealed Jesus to Simon as the Savior. Jesus is the only one who can save us. Amen. So that's why there is no amount of money that you could ever pay to get to heaven. The richest person in the world, billions of dollars, would not <coughs> get you to heaven. There's only one way to heaven. And that's through Jesus. You have to confess the Lord Jesus with your mouth and, um, and you'll be saved. Confess your sins and ask him to save you and that's the only way to be saved. Um, there was another scripture and I just closed my book. No, I wrote it down. Now turn to John chapter 14 and verse 6. Truth and the life. 
No man cometh unto the Father but by me. He is the only way Amen. to get to the Father, to get to God, to get to heaven. He is the only, the only way. Okay. Um, let's uh, can we get through the memory verse again. why we should worship God because Jesus is the only way to salvation. There are not many ways. There's only one way. And that's why we should worship him. All right, you guys will see. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, Joshua, Judges, Ruth, First and Second Samuel, First and Second Kings, First and Second Chronicles, Ezra, Nehemiah, Esther, <coughs> Job, Psalms and Proverbs, Ecclesiastes, Song of Solomon. Isaiah, Jeremiah, Lamentations, Ezekiel, Daniel, Hosea, Joel, Amos, Obadiah, Jonah, Micah, Nahum, Habakkuk, Haggai, Zechariah, Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians, 1st and 2nd Thessalonians, 1st and 2nd Timothy, Titus, Philemon, Hebrews, James, 1st and 2nd Peter, 1st John, 2nd John, 3rd John, Jude and Revelation. Good job. No, you can't get to heaven. No, you can't get to heaven. 
I may never march in the infantry, ride in the cavalry, shoot the artillery. I may never fly over the enemy, but I'm in the Lord's army. Yes, sir! I'm in the Lord's army. Yes, sir! I'm in the Lord's army. Yes, sir! I may never march in the infantry, ride in the cavalry. Shoot the artillery, I may never fly or the enemy, but I'm in the Lord's army. Yes, sir! <laughs> Anything else you want to say? You have ideas? Some glad morning when this life is over, I away, fly away to the home on God's celestial shore. I Thank you. 
sure like Robin's lesson. Amen. You know, the Bible says that there is one mediator between God and man, the man, Christ Jesus. Amen. There's only one. Amen. There's only one mediator. I'm glad that there's not a bunch of different folks that we have to go to because you might have one that tells you one thing and one that tells you another. And uh, that God has given us His perfect, infallible Word, amen, to guide us and direct us so that we may go to, to live with Christ forever. And uh, amen, not just to, to, so that we might go to heaven, but that we know how to live our lives here while we're here today. I don't know about you, but when I get to heaven, I'm not going to need faith anymore. Amen. I'm not going to need God's help. Once, I, once I'm there, amen, He's going to give us a glorified body, and uh, my faith is going to end in sight. But amen, I need His help here today. So that's why Jesus told us that I've come that you might have life and that you might have it more abundant. Amen. God wants us to have abundant life today. Today. He wants us to have victory in Jesus today. Amen. So uh, I, as, as y'all know, this is Mother's Day. And I love Mother's Day, uh, uh, not, not, you know, uh, not just because of the fact that I was saved on Mother's Day, but I love my mother. I'm thankful for my mom. And uh, so, you know, it says here uh, uh, in, in Proverbs 31 that her children rise up and call her blessed. So uh, before we uh, go on with the service, um, I just want to, if you have something that you'd like to say for your mother this morning, I, I'm thankful for my mother uh, because she raised me and took care of me. I'm, I'm thankful uh, for, I remember when I was a boy that she worked midnights and uh, that she uh, waited on tables, and that's hard work. And you know, today I still have respect when I go to a restaurant. I have respect for waitresses that work in a restaurant because I know how hard a work it is. That my mom worked hard to try to take care of me when I was a little boy, and she worked hard taking care of me when I was a teenager, and I was rotten. And she loved me still with unconditional love, with the natural affection of God. Amen. She loved me. And, and I'm thankful for my mom today. Does anybody have anything that you want to say for your mother? Anything you'd like to say that you'd like to, uh, whether your mother's here, Tommy, if you want to say something about your, your mommy, or if uh, Autumn, Rusty, or Ray, or Andy, do you want to say something about your mommy? Russell, you go ahead, buddy. I love her. Oh, wow. amen. That's, that's precious. That's precious. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Out of the mouth of babes. I'm thankful for having a mom that, that me and Robin had. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Amen. I think everybody thinks that their mother, you know, is the most wonderful person. Just about everybody thinks that. Mm -hmm. yeah. But, you know, my mother was a good Christian woman, and, and she she raised me to believe in God. Yeah, amen. You know? And took me to church and went to church. I went to church by myself, you know. I mean, we walked down to the church because there was so many of us, you know. She stayed at home for years. But she always taught us to go to church and to love God. Amen. And I think she, but like everyone else, I think she was the most wonderful mother in the world. Amen. And like someone else said, one day I'll see her again. That's right. And I just want to praise God for that. Thank you. For letting me be born. Amen. Such a good mother. I heard someone on the radio yesterday ask who was the greatest mother. And his answer was, and mine is too, Mary is Amen. the greatest. Amen. Then in my eyes, my mother was the next greatest. Yes. And I think that's why everybody that has a mother or had a mother, mine's been gone many years, but I, I have the same memory today I had when she went away. That's right. So I think everybody thinks theirs is the best. Right. That's the way it should be. You know, I'm very blessed that each Sunday I can come to church with my mom. Yeah. You know, the earliest, some of the earliest memories I can ever remember is standing beside Grandma in church mm -hmm. and her singing. I remember her singing, and this was before she, she fell and had to use a walker, but and she wasn't able to go to church anymore. But I can remember just being just a little tiny fella and looking up at Grandma and her looking down at me smiling while she's singing. This is plain as day. I can remember that. I thank God for those kind of memories. Anybody else? Well, we want to honor 
we want to honor our mothers that are here today, and uh, so uh, we have some things that we want to that we want to give all the mothers, and so we want to start first uh, with the mother that has the most children, and there's there's some flowers and things up here, and and uh, if you don't like flowers or a green thumb, we have some uh, candy and things for instant gratification. <laughs> so uh, if, if uh, uh, who, who here uh, has has uh, five children? Does anybody, any mother, have five children? Only if you count Roger as a child. <laughs> <laughs> uh, how, how about four? Five, four. You had four. <laughs> Any of anybody else? Maria, why don't you come up and pick something out? Four is the most. <laughs> wow. You're really a good one. You're a So Leanna, why don't you come up and, and pick one up? I'm old. <laughs> I didn't want you to even say how old you were, so I tried to do that. Make any difference? Anyone you want. So the next one will be Mama. Mama, you come pick you one out. Scriptures and, and turn to the scriptures and things like that. So 
Uh, if you would, look with me at Genesis chapter 37. And uh, we're going to talk this morning about the favor of the Lord. Uh, I don't know about y'all, but uh, uh, I'd rather have the favor of the Lord than I would anything. Amen. I'd rather have God's favor than I would all the amount of money in this world. Because right. you know, money will perish. It's corruptible. The Bible says we're not redeemed with corruptible things as silver and gold. Amen. But with the precious blood of Christ. So money and possessions and things in this world are corruptible, but God is eternal. Yeah. That's why the Bible tells us to set our affections on things above and not on things below. Amen. So God, God desires for us to look at the things that are eternal and desire. You know, God even gives us, uh, tells us that uh, He wants us to covet. Now, a lot of, the Bible tells us, thou shalt not covet. But God says for us to covet the best gifts. The best gifts. It's all right for you to want the things that God wants you to have. God doesn't want you to covet things on this earth, but God wants you to covet His things. It's good to want the things of God. And amen, I'm so glad that the Bible tells us that the young lions do lack and suffer hunger, but they that seek the Lord shall not want any good thing. Amen. He is my shepherd, and I shall not want. Amen. God amen. provides us everything. He gives us everything we need. Amen. Yes, Hallelujah. A lot of the times, the things we want. Yeah. Amen. It, it, it's wonderful to have the favor of the Lord. And uh, so we're going to study a little bit about, uh, about the favor of the Lord. In uh, Genesis 37, beginning at Genesis 37, the Bible says that, And Jacob dwelt in the land wherein his father was a stranger in the land of Canaan. These are the generations of Jacob. Joseph, being 17 years old, was feeding the flock with his brethren. And the lad was with the sons of Bilhah and with the sons of Zilpah and his father's wives. And Joseph brought unto his father their evil report. Now Israel loved Joseph more than all his children because he was the son of his old age. And he made him a coat of many collars. And when his brethren saw that their father loved him more than all his brethren, they hated him and could not speak peaceably unto him. And Joseph dreamed a dream, and he told it his brethren, and they hated him the yet more. And he said unto them, Here I pray you for this dream uh, which I have dreamed. For behold, we were binding sheaves in the field, and lo, my sheep arose and also stood upright. And behold, your sheaves stood round about, and made obeisance to my sheep. And his brethren said unto him, Shalt thou indeed reign over us, or shalt thou indeed have dominion over us? And they hated him yet the more for his dreams and for his words. And he dreamed yet another dream, and told it his brethren, and said, Behold, I have dreamed a dream more. And behold, the sun and the moon and the eleven stars made obeisance to me. And he told it to his father, and to his brethren, and his father rebuked him, and said unto him, What is this dream that thou hast dreamed? Shall I and thy mother and thy brethren indeed come to, come to bow down ourselves to thee to the earth? And his brethren envied him, but his father observed the saying. So let's go before the Lord in prayer. Father God, Lord Almighty, we praise you, Father God, Lord, for your truth. Father God, Lord, for your words that you have given us from on high, Father. Lord, that's forever settled in heaven. And Father God, Lord, we just praise you for your exceeding great and precious promises, dear Lord. Uh, that, Father, that you give your children. And, and Father God, Lord, we just want to thank you, dear Lord, for all that you've accomplished, Father. And Lord, I pray that you would open our eyes, our hearts, our minds, and our souls to receive your word this morning, Father. And Lord God, hide me behind the cross, Father. Lord God, that men would not hear from me, but they would hear from you, Father. And Lord God, I give you all the praise for all that you accomplish. In Jesus' name we pray, and amen. amen. The Bible says there that Joseph loved, uh, Israel uh, loved Joseph more than all his children. In other words, he showed Joseph favor. Joseph had favor above all his other, uh, 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 all of uh, Israel's other children. And he loved him so much that he gave him a coat, a special coat that was of many colors that he had uh, uh, given uh, Joseph. And, and for this reason, his brothers hated him. 
They could not stand it that he had favor. And I want you to know this morning that when you have the favor of the Lord, uh, uh, brother, that you are not to fear uh, uh, because uh, uh, the, the world will hate you. The Bible said, John wrote, Marvel not if the world hates you, for know that it hated Christ first. Amen. So when you have the favor of the Lord, you, there will be people that will hate you. They will hate you and they will uh, uh, try, They will talk about you as being arrogant or that you're boastful. But brother, there's nothing wrong with boasting in the Lord. There's nothing wrong with glorying in the cross. Uh, if I'm going to glory, I'm going to glory in the cross and the salvation of my Savior Jesus. You don't have to be ashamed of Jesus. Uh, uh, brother, you can sing as loud as you want to sing. You can testify as long as you want to testify. You can pray as long or as loud or as short as you want to pray. You can preach as hard as you want to preach. And brother, marvel not if the world hates you. Joseph's brothers hated him because he had a special coat. His father, you know what? Hallelujah. Jesus taught a parable. He taught a parable about two sons uh, and how the younger son went and spent his uh, uh, was substance with riotous living. But when he came back to his father uh, and he went to say, Father, I've sinned against heaven and before thee, his father took a, a, a ring uh, and put the best robe on him uh, and shoes on his feet. He clothed him uh, with a robe of righteousness. Uh, and when you are saved, amen, God gives you a special coat. Amen. God gives you, amen, a coat of many collars. You want to know what those collars are? You can look in Galatians 5 and 22, and you can see the fruit of the Spirit. That it's love, and it's joy, and it's peace, and it's meekness, and it's temperance, and it's faith, uh, and it's goodness. And against such there is no law, but brother, the world will hate you. Yeah. The world will hate you, but glory be to God. Don't worry about it. And folks hate you and persecute you. He said, for cause great is your reward in heaven. Amen. Amen. Your reward's great in heaven if you suffer for Jesus' name's sake. Right. If you suffer for doing the things that are right, happy are ye. Glory be to God. Your faith is more precious than gold that perishes. Amen. Amen. As Peter said, he said, Can the, think it not strange concerning this fiery trial which is to try you as some strange thing has happened unto you. And Joseph, brother, he, he, he was his father's favorite son. He, he showed him favor and he loved him more than any of his other children. But the Bible says that they took Joseph uh, and, they, and they put him through him into a pit and they sold him into slavery. Oh, but glory be to God. You know, uh, I, I can't imagine being how it was with Joseph. Uh, I, because when I was 17, uh, uh, brother, I, the, one of the, the furthest things from my mind was, was doing what was right before God. But glory be to God. The Bible tells me here that Joseph, when he was 17, that God gave him a dream. And it wasn't just any dream because he went and he told this to his brothers and to his mother and his father. And it, they hated him because he said that you're going to bow down to me. And brother, I tell you what, I couldn't imagine going to my daddy when I was 17 and saying, Dad, you're going about it. Brother, I'd have probably been in a lot of trouble, I'll tell you what. But I, glory be to God, he knew that it was from God. And so he, he, had, he had shared this dream of, about something that God had showed him and revealed to him. You know that it's no different today. It doesn't matter how young you are. It doesn't matter where you've come from or what your family's done. God uh, wants to show you favor. Brother, if you're uh, uh, six years old, seven years old, eight years old, nine years old, ten years old, God wants to show you favor uh, and, and, and have you uh, to be glorified in Christ's glory and Christ's love. And hallelujah, uh, He will show you favor. And, and you, can, you, can be, uh, you can go in the ways of Christ and brother, you can have the favor of God at no matter what age you're at. And glory be to God, uh, uh, it's a blessing. It's a blessing to have the favor of God. But uh, the Bible says here they sold Joseph. They sold him into slavery. And uh, his, brothers, his brothers hated it uh, that, he had, uh, that he had told them about their dream. The Bible says there, if you go on and you read about Joseph in, in Genesis 39, that when he was in Potiphar's house, even when Joseph was a slave, even when Joseph had been made a servant, the Bible says here that, that, he had left, that Potiphar left all that he had in Joseph's hand, and he knew not all he had save the bread which he did eat. In other words, Potiphar didn't, have, didn't even pay attention to how much uh, the things that he had, the substance that he had, the only thing he knew about was the things that he ate. And Joseph was a goodly person and well favored. 
The brother, there are tribulations that we go through in this world. Jesus said, in this world, ye shall have tribulations. You will. You're going to have tests. You're going to have trials. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivereth them out of them all. You will have tribulations. And Joseph was, uh, he was sold into slavery and he was a slave at Potiphar's house, but he was favored by God. The Bible said that God was with him. And amen, brother, uh, uh, many of us are servants and, and, there, and we serve uh, 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 in a job or whatever, or whether, whatever you do. Uh, when you read in the Bible in the New Testament and it talks about masters and it talks about servants, that's a person who is uh, more or less employed by someone else. And you know what? You can be a servant and you can still have the favor of God. And God will show you His favor no matter what you have to do in this world. No matter what your lot is, no matter what trial you're going through, God can show you His favor. The Bible goes on and it tells us that how in, uh, in, in, uh, that he, when he was in prison, even in prison when Joseph was was uh, was was cast into prison for something he didn't do. You know what? If if you suffer for sin, then you deserve your punishment. But brother, if you suffer and you have not done nothing wrong, then glory be to God. Just rejoice and give God the praise. And when Joseph was in prison, the Bible says, "But the Lord was with Joseph and showed him mercy and gave him favor in the sight of the keeper of the prison." So even in prison. Now, brother, if, if you go to the, if you get in trouble, something happens in this world, uh, whatever it is that you're going through, no matter what kind of a situation you're in, uh, brother, you can have faith and God will show you favor in the midst of a trial. In the midst of a tribulation, God can show you favor and, and no matter what you're going through. And I, brother, I tell you what, I, I desire to have the favor of the Lord so that whatever I'm going through, whatever I'm dealing with, God shows favor. Uh, Joseph desired, Joseph had that favor of the Lord. So uh, to, to look at uh, the favor, what, what, that, what it means to have favor, why, why do we need to have the favor of the Lord? What is the purpose of us having the favor of the Lord? Well, first of all, uh, the, the Lord has showed us love before we were able to show God love. Uh, and ourselves. The Bible says in John, 1 John 4 and 10 that here in His love, not that we love God, but that He loved us and sent His Son to be the propitiation for our sins. And brother, I looked at that word propitiation and I, I, I wanted to understand what it means, to the propitiation. Uh, so, so I started looking up and, and, and studying on the word propitiation and I looked it up in, in Webster's Dictionary in Webster's 1913 Dictionary, it says that it's the act of appeasing wrath and conciliating or reconciling the favor of an offended person, the act of making propitious. And man, I, that, that, that's still, a, I had to look up the word conciliating to see what that is. To reconcile, I understand rec reconcile. If you owe something and, and, and you pay a, pay a debt, then it's been reconciled. That debt has been reconciled. But, it, but the definition here, it says that it's to, uh, to reconcile the favor of an offended person when someone is offended. Do you know, do you realize today that in this world, uh, that, that when we are saved, that, that God, this thing, that when we're saved, God gives us unmerited favor. That's what grace is. Grace is is unmerited favor. In other words, you could not earn grace. Just like Robin demonstrated here that, that uh, when, uh, when, when God saves us, it's nothing that we can pay. It's nothing that we can do uh, that, that saves us. It's by God's unmerited favor through faith in Jesus. That God's wrath, when we're saved, God's wrath toward us is reconciled. It's paid for. And also, we obtain His favor. So that's what it said there, that the definition of propitiation was it was conciliating the wrath. So there's wrath uh, that is towards us. And it's also that we receive the favor of God. That we not only is God's wrath atoned for and God's wrath paid for, but it's, but it's, it is, um, it's actually, uh, we actually receive God's favor. We are literally guilty of offending God. 
If you were born into this world, you were born into sin. Each and every one of us was born. If anybody here hasn't been born the first time, I'll raise your hand. But the Bible tells me that, in, uh, behold, I was shaped in sin, and in, uh, behold, I was shaped in iniquity, and in sin did my mother conceive me. We are born into sin. Amen. So that means that every child, as soon as a child is born into this world, they're born into sin. The Bible says that as soon as they are born, they go astray speaking lies. Children go astray speaking lies. My mom and dad didn't have to teach me how to lie. Yeah. But I guarantee you I was a liar when I was, when I was a little kid. Because I, I, something had happened, I'd try to cover something up, and there was something with the, maybe I thought I was going to get in trouble. Well, maybe I can fool mom and dad. Brother, you're better off just to tell the truth. Tell the truth and face it. But as soon as ch children are born, they're born into sin. And they begin sinning. And you don't have to teach a child to sin, but a child needs to learn the ways of the Lord. That we are to train up children in the way they should go, and when they're old, they'll not depart from it. That we are to raise them in the nurture and the admonition of the Lord. That is what this world needs today more than anything. This world needs to be on fire for Jesus uh, and rather to not just be on Sunday and not just be on Wednesday, but amen, every day of the week and every hour of the day, be looking and sensitive to the Holy Spirit and teach our children the ways that they should That's go. Right, amen. Brother, so that one day they'll fall in love with Jesus the same way you are. That's what I desire above all things. Yes. That's why John said, he said, Am I, he said, glory be to God, he says, uh, I have no greater joy than to hear that my children walk in truth. We are guilty of offending God. Yes. You see, from the very beginning, God made everything in this world perfect. Everything He made in this world, it was good. Everything that God made was good. There wasn't any flaw in it, what God had made. We're guilty from the very beginning. Man, uh, in the beginning, God gave the very best He could to mankind, and mankind rejected His blessing and chose sin, chose to disobey God instead of instead of obeying God. So we see there in the Bible that in Genesis chapter one and verse four, God saw the light that it was good. God divided the, divided the light from the darkness. God called the uh, the dry land earth. And the gathering together of the waters he called seas, and God saw that it was good. Uh, Genesis 1 and 12, and the earth brought fruit forward, and, and the herb yielding seed after his kind, and the tree yielding fruit whose seed was in itself after his kind, and God saw that it was good. And we see that he made this, the moon to rule, and the, and the sun to rule over the day and, the, and over the night, and he divided the light from the darkness, and God saw it was good. God created wells in every living creature that moveth. Uh, which the waters brought forth abundantly after their kind, and every ring fowl after his kind, and God saw that it was good. And God made the beast of the earth after his kind, and cattle after their kind, and everything that creepeth upon the earth after his kind, and God saw that it was good. So everything that God did was good. God didn't make anything bad. Everything that God does is righteous and perfect and holy. It took man to make sin. It took man to choose sin. And he just as Satan, the Bible says that his name was Lucifer when he was in heaven. He was the anointed cherub. Did you know that? That he was the anointed cherub in heaven. And brother, he chose that he was he chose that he was going to rise up against God. And there was a great war in heaven, Revelation 12 says. And brother uh, uh, Michael, the archangel, prevailed over him. And Jesus said, I beheld Satan fall as lightning from heaven. Yeah, that's right. But he was the anointed cherub. He chose sin. And that's what Adam and Eve did is they chose sin instead of God's blessing. And so every man that is born into this world is born into sin. There is not a just man upon earth that doeth good and sinneth not. They are all together become corruptible. Their throat is an open sepulcher. Brother, everyone that is born into this world is a sinner. It doesn't matter, it doesn't matter if your grandma went to church, if your mom went to church, if your daddy was a preacher. It doesn't matter if, you, if your daddy built a church. You are born into this world a sinner and you have sinned and you are guilty of offending God. God gave and did the very best He could. He spoke.
spoke all of these worlds, the sun, the moon, the stars, the trees, the birds, the whales. God made all of these things and gave it good, made it good. And God said, I've given you dominion over this. He gave it to Adam and gave him dominion over it. But Adam chose sin. Now, brother, when you do the very best you can at something, you go and you pour your heart into it. And someone just openly just rejects it and walks away. It's offending, isn't it? Yes. Doesn't it hurt your heart? Yeah. Then, brother, that's what mankind did to God. Mankind did that to God when God created this world. You see, it's not just uh, the Bible goes on and it tells us in Romans 3.23, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Every one of us. Every one of us. There, you say, well, Brother Troy, I, I haven't killed nobody. I know you haven't killed nobody, but I guarantee you've, you've uh, either lied or you've coveted. There is not one person in this world that has kept all of the law except for Jesus. That's why He's the only way. Jesus was the only one who never sinned. You see, when Jesus was born, His daddy, His, his, his father was the Holy Ghost. Amen. Joseph, Joseph, Mary's husband, Joseph, he was just the one that took care of Jesus. Amen. But his father, she had never been with a man. His father was the Holy Ghost. The Jesus, his blood was precious and perfect. So all of us have sinned aside from Jesus. Now Jesus was tempted with sin. He was tempted, the Bible says, for we have not an high priest, in Hebrews 4, we have not an high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities, but was tempted in all points like as we are yet without sin. So God did the very best He could in creating this world, and He made this world and gave mankind dominion over the earth, but mankind lost dominion over the earth. He lost dominion over these things. He gave it up to Satan for the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. So God had another plan already in place. In Genesis 3.15, God said, I will put enmity between Satan's seed and between the woman's seed. He said that it shall bruise thy head and thou shalt bruise his heel when he was speaking to the serpent Satan. And so God gave his son again the very best he could. God gave the very best he could by sending his only begotten son, Jesus. Amen? Send his, the best that he very possibly could. As a matter of fact, Jesus is God himself. Amen. The Bible says in Genesis 22, when Abraham was taking Isaac up to Mount Moriah to offer his son as a sacrifice, the Bible said that Isaac said to his father, he said, Father, here's the wood and here's the fire. He says, but where is the sacrifice? And Abraham said, my son, God will provide himself. A sacrifice. God Himself became flesh. The Bible says that the Word became flesh. And we beheld His glory. The glory as of the only begotten of the Father. Full of grace and truth. So God gave, God gave the best He could in creation. In making this world. And mankind offended God. And amen, we, we looked at the word propitiation. The word propitiation, it means to, to conciliate uh, uh, or to reconcile the wrath. So God's, God's wrath uh, towards the, this world, towards Adam and Eve, was that they were going to die. He said, in the day that ye eat thereof, ye shall surely die. And they were separated from the Garden, the, uh, from the, the garden of Eden. And you know what? <laughs> Hallelujah. There wasn't, there's never been a man that's lived uh, and, and not died in this world besides Christ. Besides, uh, besides those that's been raptured, uh, such as Enoch or as Elijah. There's never been no one that's, that's lived and not died besides those uh, in the Bible. So we see that, that God, God gave the best that He could in giving His only begotten Son. You see, the Bible tells us here that once we, uh, once we acknowledge Christ and once we learn about Jesus, you know, to whom much is given, much is required. God, God doesn't uh, uh, just give us things for us just to be comfortable. God gives us His gospel and He gives us His word uh, so that we would be saved and so that we would uh, uh, love Him with all of our heart. There is none, none like Him. We are to have no other gods before Him. Amen. The Bible says here in Hebrews 10 that if we sin willingly 
after we have received the knowledge of the truth, there remaineth no more sacrifice for sin. In other words, if we, brother, if you think that you can get saved and that you can just keep on living the same way that you lived before, you got another thing coming. You didn't really get saved. You did not really get saved. Because if you got saved and you believed on Jesus, you would hate sin. You would hate it with a passion. I didn't say that you wouldn't sin. I said that you'll hate it. God hates. Amen. The, look at Proverbs chapter 6. These six things doth the Lord hate. Amen. Yea, even seven are an abomination unto Him. <laughs> Those hands that shed innocent blood, people that abort babies, it's a sin. Those that, uh, those that sow discord among the brethren, it's a sin. God hates sin because it was sin that God had to send His Son to hang on a cross and to suffer for you and me. It was sin that, that Christ had to come to this world for. This is a faithful saying worthy of all acceptation that Christ Jesus came into this world to save sinners. That's what He came for. And brother, if we sin willingly, willingly just live in sin after we've received the knowledge of the truth, there's no other sacrifice for sin but a certain fearful looking for of judgment and fiery indignation which shall devour the adversaries. You see, the Bible tells us about how he that despised Moses' law, he died without mercy under two or three witnesses. So those that despised the law of God that said, Thou shalt not covet, thou shalt not bear false witness, honor thy father and thy mother, uh, th thou shalt not steal, and thou shalt not have no other gods before me, thou shalt not make unto, uh, the, any graven image. Uh, so uh, those that, that despised that law, when, when they would sin or live in sin, the, 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 the law of Moses said that you had to have two or three witnesses to that transgression. So two or three witnesses would come, just like in a court system today, and they would testify and they would say that, that they had done this thing. And so they would be stoned. Or they would, be, uh, uh, they, would, uh, they would die for their sin. The wages of sin is death. So the Bible tells us here of how much, this is the Word of God in Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 29, of, of how much sore punishment suppose ye shall he be thought worthy who hath trodden underfoot the Son of God. Now Adam and Eve, they offended God. They offended God by, by choosing sin and the tree of knowledge of good and evil. And mankind today, who has heard of the knowledge of Jesus Christ coming to this world and hanging on a cross, being beat and being a, 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 a suffering for our sin, of how much sore punishment suppose ye shall he be thought worthy who hath trodden underfoot the Son of God, and has counted the blood of the covenant, wherewith he was sanctified an unholy thing. Brother, the wrath of God, if you want to understand a little bit about the wrath of God, you can look at the cross. You can look at the cross and see the way that the cross is and how Christ suffered. That was the wrath of God. The Bible said that he made him to be sin for us, who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in Him. The Lord hath laid on Him all we like sheep, Isaiah 53 says, that all we like sheep have gone astray. All of us like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to His own way, and the Lord has laid on Him, that's Jesus, the iniquity of us all. The Bible says that He that believeth on the Son hath everlasting life. And he that believeth not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abideth on him. So what does it mean? Why, why do we need to have the favor of God? Brother, I tell you, I don't want to have the wrath of God abide on me. I don't know about you, but I don't want the wrath of God to abide on me. You say, Brother Troy, I, you're, you, you, you try to scare people, preach. You listen, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Hallelujah. You, if you're a sinner... Here this morning, you're living in willful sin. Or maybe, you have, maybe you've just learned the knowledge of Jesus. And if, you, if, and, if you turn, and if you don't accept Jesus as your Savior, you should be afraid. Amen. It is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. Amen. I tell you, that's the truth. That's the Word of that's God. Lord. And brother, you need to be saved. Amen. That is the greatest thing that can ever happen to you, you is to be saved. 
Oh, glory be to God. I'm so glad that God doesn't just leave us to, and, and say, well, uh, tough luck. You messed up. You're not getting another chance. The Bible says, my little children, these things write I unto you that ye sin not. He says, but and if any man sin, we have an advocate Amen. with the Father, Amen. Jesus Christ, the righteous. You know what an advocate is. An advocate is that more or less say that you're sitting here and that you and that you're on trial. And brother, you're you're getting ready to go to you're going to you're going to go on death row. And there's a judge that's up here, and the judge is up here, and the judge is getting ready to pronounce sentence on you. But there's one who stands in, one who stands in the that's middle, so one who is an arbitrator, one who's a mediator, yes, one who is an advocate on your behalf. Yes. And he says, uh, Judge, uh, Heavenly Father, uh, I paid for his sin debt. Uh, I hung on a cross for him. Uh, I died for him so that he uh, is mine uh, and that he can go and be with me in the place that I've made for him. That's Amen. what an advocate is. Somebody that goes to the judge. Somebody that goes. Uh, there's only one judge and it's God Almighty. Uh, you're not in the place to judge. God judges. Uh, and his judgment is true and his judgment is righteous uh, and all that he says and all that he does. Amen. The Bible says here that He, Christ, is the propitiation for our sin. Not for ours only, but for the sin of the whole world. Oh, brother, not only this morning can you be saved and the wrath of God paid for, the wrath of God taken from you, but you can also gain the favor of God. Amen. And have God's favor in the midst of a trial, yeah. in the midst of tribulation. Brother, whether you're in jail, whether you're made a slave, you can have the favor of God. <laughs> Hallelujah. For God will be with you. He said, lo, I'll be with you always, yeah. even to the end of the earth. Amen. Jesus will be with you always. He said, well, Brother Troy, what if I sin? My little children, these things write unto you that you sin not. And if any man sin, we have an advocate. Yes. Praise you can God. go to Jesus. Amen. If you have faltered, Maybe, maybe, you have, maybe you have confessed Jesus multiple times. Maybe you have uh, reconfessed Jesus. But brother, you have faltered. And, you, and you, have, you have missed it. Listen, you don't have to live in that doubt. The Bible says, Hereby we do know that we know Him if we keep His commandments. You know that I, that I know that I'm saved this morning? Do you know that you're saved? Do you know that you're going to... Now, I'm not, I didn't say, do you hope that you're going to heaven? Bless him, Lord. Do you know that you're going to heaven? The Bible says, hereby we do know that we know Him if we keep His commandments. He that saith, I know Him, and keepeth not His commandments is a liar, and the truth is not in him. But whoso keepeth His word in him verily is the love of God perfected, and hereby know we that we are in Him. Brother, it's wonderful to know that you're saved. Amen. It's wonderful to yes, know that Praise your heart God. is right with God. Do you know this morning that you're Thank saved? You. Turn with me, if you would, in the, in the Red Book. Uh, page 20 in the Red Book. And if you're here and you want to be saved this morning, you need to come forward and confess Jesus. You can come forward and you can pray. And I'll pray with you if, if you'll come forward. And I can't save you, but I can pray with you. Amen. And if, if you want to be saved this morning, you can come forward. If you want to re rededicate your heart and your life to Jesus, maybe you haven't been living for Jesus the way that you would like to live for Jesus. You know, if you've ever been closest to Him, closer to Him than you are today, you have backslidden. You have backslidden if you've ever been closer in your life to Him than you are right now. And brother, you can, you can draw nigh unto God. So once you come this morning, once you come, if, if, if you want to be saved, you can come forward and, and confess Jesus. The Bible says that, if, that, that Jesus said, if you'll confess me before men, He said, I'll confess you before my heavenly Father. If you'll confess Him before men, if you won't be ashamed of Jesus, you can be saved. I'm so glad that He doesn't make me ashamed of who He is. Won't you come this morning? Do you want to be 
saved? Do you want to know that you're saved? You can come this morning and you can know that your heart is right with God. You can know that your sin is taken away and that you're not living a sinner. Do you want to go to heaven and see what and, and be with the Lord for eternity? You can go and be with Him forever if you'll believe this morning. You know, there's others that, that talk about another Jesus in other ways, but there's only one Jesus. There's only one way to be saved this morning. Is your heart right with the Lord this morning? Do you know that your heart's right? You can come this morning and be saved. You can come and pray. You want God's favor in your life? You can't have it any other way. It doesn't, it doesn't come any other way. You can't be good enough to get God's favor. You can't be good enough to have His favor. It doesn't cost you nothing, but it'll cost you everything. Why don't you come this morning? We can pray together. There's nothing to be ashamed of. You can come and be saved if you want to. If you come up and you confess Jesus, do you want to be saved? Do you want to know that your heart's right with Him? What a wonderful day to be saved. Have you heard what a wonderful time to know what God's got prepared for you. Do you want to be saved? You come up here with me and we can pray if you want to be saved. Do you want to pray? You want to come up here with me and pray? says that he believed Jesus died for him and he asked Jesus to save him. Praise the Lord. You know, there's no greater thing than for somebody to be saved. It doesn't matter how little, it doesn't matter how old. God will save you no matter where you are. And you know, God's no respecter of persons. It's wonderful. It's wonderful for this little boy to be saved this morning. There's nothing greater it's, it's the greatest miracle you'll ever see. It's the greatest miracle you'll ever receive. It's greater than making the blind to walk. It's greater than raising the dead for one to be born again. Russell will remember that on May 12th, 2000, and May, what is today? 13th. 13th, May 13th, 2012, that he was saved. And he came forward and he confessed Jesus before you people yeah. and before the Lord God Almighty. And he said, Jesus saved me. Amen. You believe Jesus saved you? All right. All right. Y'all come up here and give him a hand. Y'all come up here and shake his hand. Give him a hug. Sister Gail, bless the Lord. I heard an old, old story. How the Savior came from glory, how he gave his life on Calvary to save a wretch like me. I heard about his groaning, of his precious blood's atoning, and I repented of my sin and won the victory. Oh, victory in 
help you to hear. And cause the blind to see. And then I cry, dear Jesus, come and heal my broken spirit. And somehow Jesus came and brought to me the victory. Oh, victory in Jesus, my Savior forever. He stopped me and brought me with His redeeming blood. He loved me ere I knew Him, and all my love is to Him. He plunged me to victory beneath the cleansing flood. Bless the Lord. Isn't it good to be saved? Isn't it good to know that the Lord's prepared a place for you and that, amen, your sin's gone. Praise Your sin's going, buddy. Yeah. We're going to live forever. Tommy forgot to give me. What, Tommy forgot to give you one? Well, Tommy will give you a hug. You won't come give me my hug, buddy? <laughs> he counted every one of them. He counted every one of your hugs. That's how precious they are to him. Tommy is shy. He's a little shy. He'll give you one in a little bit, okay? We all come the same way. It's as a little child. Jesus took a little child and he put him in the midst of his disciples. And he said, Except you be converted and become as little children, you shall not enter into the kingdom of heaven. I'm so glad he's looking for children today. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm so glad. What a blessing today has been. What a blessing. One soul was saved. Brother, the, the, the Bible says that there's joy in the presence of His angels over one that Amen. repents. More than the 99 that need no repentance. Right. Oh, it's a blessing. Amen. Y'all ready to praise the Lord? <laughs> Anybody have anything you want to say to the Lord this morning? I just want to say it's been a blessing to be here. Amen. Today. Amen. Yes, ma'am. I'm so thankful for seeing all y'all this morning. I tell you, the Lord truly makes us to set in heavenly places. The Bible tells us that's a promise from God. We're sitting in a heavenly place. This is just an echo and type of what it's going to be in heaven. I'm looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to it. Are you looking forward to seeing Jesus? It doesn't get any better than, than knowing that you're saved and knowing you're going to be with Him forever. It's as simple as just confessing Jesus and believing in your heart. It's that simple. From Jim, would you lead us in praising the Lord? Praise, praise the Lord, Lord. for His mercy and grace forever.